Hey guys, I'm RJ Bates III, and this is my partner and best friend, Elijah De La Garza. And today we are here to debate the difference between inbound marketing and outbound marketing. So I'm big on outbound marketing. Elijah's lazy, and he's big on inbound marketing. <laughs> and so we're gonna go back and forth about which one we think is better and why we think it's better. So Elijah, why don't you take the floor and say why you think inbound marketing is better than outbound. All right, well that's easy. Um, anybody who has gotten an inbound lead knows that whenever you get an inbound lead, those are usually home runs. Whenever a customer takes the time to research and find you, um, your responsibility as a business is to have a system set up that can receive that inbound lead. But if you are set up for that, that is almost every time gonna be a deal uh, from my experience. So that's my number one reason. The percentage of deals that close on inbound is much higher than outbound. Okay, but from my perspective, I feel like you're losing the control of your marketing efforts. From the aspect of if we're doing outbound, we can actually take constant action towards that. Whereas inbound, we're kind of sitting and having to be patient and waiting on the customer to take action to come to us. Well, I think that's true, but it's also, they're very similar in the regard of turning the lights on for the customer. You still have to do an outbound marketing with inbound if you think about it. You have to get yourself in front of the customer. Just the call to action is very different. You're not actively doing anything. So I agree with you on that point. You do lose control. I mean, I like to have someone on the phone talking to them and not let them off the phone. Even if you just say, okay, I'll send you an email or I'll text you or shit. It's like, then they're not responding. They didn't sign the contract. You're looking at your DocuSign. So right. I, I agree with you from that perspective. but you have them captivated when it's inbound. So if you have your process detailed on that end, like we know how to do, it, it can be the same. You, you capture them, it's just different, you know? Is it coming in or going out? And I, I also, my argument on this is also the expense. When you look at the, the cheapest forms of marketing, and specifically for the real estate investing industry, you've got SMS and cold calling. Mm -hmm. When you look at the most expensive, You've got SEO and PPC, which are basically like our two, our four forms of marketing that we're arguing over right now, right? Agreed, yes, they are. Well, not necessarily um, just SEO and PPC, because that's basically just your your internet you know, stuff. It could be the, the Facebook ads and the Instagram ads as well. That gets sure. thrown in there. Yeah. Craigslist ad, any place where you're placing your contact information where the customer needs to pick up and call you that's the call to action so i think um budget wise it, that's a toss-up in my mind because i know what we spend and it's pretty substantial but that's because we have a very aggressive marketing campaign correct most people are not going to do that in in the layman's viewpoint what i would want to do is more expensive than what you would want to do especially up front for sure but what you're saying is is that inbound is more profitable it is but it but that's on a just a gross profit not necessarily net profit level. No, not necessarily even that. I think on a net profitability level, they're, they're equal for, for all things considered. I mean, you can have equal luck on an outbound as an inbound on getting a home run or, or turd. I don't think that, I think they're equal in that regard. I think it's more about your closing ratio, like the success rate you're gonna have when someone calls inbound, like you have them hot on the phone and they're looking for what you want. It's a whole different scenario than when you're calling someone and they're saying, what do you want from me? And that's where you're getting your curse out phone calls and all that. But stuff. I mean, even if you look at SMS marketing, some of the, the best leads are not actual responses via text. They're the inbound phone calls from that. I mean, you turn the lights on and it forced them to call you. Mm -hmm. so, so would you say possibly that your outbound marketing is a form of inbound marketing? I, I think, yeah, they, they, they coincide together yeah, in, that, so. in the texting specifically because yeah. you're right. You get a lot of the phone calls and that's what we're looking for is just how can we get in front of them? So if I want to use Facebook, uh, I want to use SMS, as long as I'm getting in front of the customer on their cell phone and they can see what I want them to see and then they go, hey, you know what? I want that. Or in our case, it's a lot of times, I don't want that. Right. Why the fuck are you calling me right now? Right. That's a whole different scenario. I think the, the other aspect of this is, is we're looking at this from the perspective of we're an established company at this point, right? So we look at things very differently from the aspect of we can handle different marketing channels. 
right? Because we can actually, we can have manpower, and we can have systems and processes in place that Balls. coincide, right? That coincide with multiple different marketing channels. Whereas a lot of our viewers today are probably looking at this and saying, hey, I can maybe handle one or two marketing channels, right? And, and specifically when we talk about Crucible students and people that attend the Crucible, they're looking for a change in their business. And so for me, when I look at that and I say, I want you to put your destiny in your own, own hands, and majority of the time, if you're looking for change, that means you're, you're probably not doing well financially. So to sit there and say, hey, let's spend money on PPC or SEO, or even like you're talking about Facebook, Instagram, whatever, that's still, what are they doing with their time? What are they doing to create that change in their business while they're waiting on that inbound to come in? Well, that's a very valid point. It's definitely a staged approach and it's definitely a long game approach. Right. It's not gonna be an instant result kind of thing like with what we're doing here, where you can just get on batch and within three days you have a hot one. I mean, that could potentially happen hypothetically, but very right. unlikely. But when you do get it, it's gonna be a, a freaking deal. You're gonna get one, but it's gonna be like, I just signed a contract. Right. And you're gonna have 10 of these where maybe one's a contract. I mean, so. just take for an example with us. We have probably, I don't know, I would say in the top 1% of carrot clients with the amount of websites that oh, we no have. Oh, no question. Right? With just and the, the longevity of those websites right, just online. Just with the different locations. Right. You take our Alaska website, it performs off the charts with no effort. None. None. We have none. And, and with the shortest amount of time being online. Agreed. It, but then you take a website like in what I would consider some of our better markets, Tulsa, St. Louis, for outbound marketing. The inbound marketing on those has been nothing from SEO. Right. They just don't perform. Well, I would like to address that because I think that's the common misperception is that inbound is only SEO, PPC, Facebook, uh, you know, and ad spend on Instagram and all that good stuff. But what what I like is just turning the lights on and making yourself available. So having a Google My Business directory costs you nothing. You get a little postcard in the mail. You have something that shows up on Google Maps that's huge now. Right. Doing YouTube stuff. This is a way to get organic inbound stuff. This has produced a lot of inbound stuff for us, specifically joint venture more than anything else. But we do get leads off of this kind of stuff too. Facebook, it organic, makes us money. organic Facebook definitely works. Facebook groups can be a, a form of creating inbound. So any place that you put your contact information, and that's why I tell people, just go do it everywhere and anywhere that you can without having to spend the money. Someone's right. gonna run across it and go, hey, I want that, I'm gonna call the number. Now, back to what we were talking about, do you have the ability to handle that when it's coming in? Like a lot of people, I mean me for instance, I'm super <laughs> duper guilty I, all day long today. I'm, I didn't even, it dawned on me, I'm obviously connected to a campaign, I'm getting calls. I don't recognize the number, what did I do? You didn't Every answer. fucking time, I it. hung it up, I right. ignored it. I could have literally just made a $50,000 commission on a deal today if I would have just answered the phone. Right. So if you're gonna go do this inbound marketing stuff and you don't answer the phone, and I think that applies to your site as well. I mean, well, clearly. yeah, I yeah, I absolutely agree. Anytime the phone rings, we need to be answered. You gotta it. answer it. But on the, on the inbound specifically, I mean, that is crucial, especially just take SEO for example. One of the many versions of inbound marketing, when that comes through on email, you know, they fill out the web form, you're getting the email, they want to sell their house. I mean, Carrot has the rule of five minutes or less because yes. what are they doing if you don't call them back? They're going to the next one. They go to the next one. Most consumers do that exact process and this is what most people in business don't understand. The simple marketing concept of if you're the consumer and I want to go um, right now and find a camera store. I'm gonna go into Google and I'm gonna type in camera stores near me and on the first page, I'm gonna skip past the sponsored ads and I'm gonna go look at the little map and I'm gonna look at the top five results, yep. the one that looks the most relevant to me, I'm gonna call it. If they do not answer the phone, I do not sit there and go, well, I left them a message, I'm gonna wait for them to call me back. I literally go straight to number two and I call number two because I'm on a mission to get what I want. Number two didn't answer, I go to number three. The first one that responds to me, I am going to usually do business with them. And so this is one, one of the rules I came up with when I was doing the roofing. Answer the phone every single time. Yep. Show up to your appointment on time. Those two things right there, and you have an exponentially greater chance of getting the deal. 
or if you get the email, within one minute. Have exactly. someone Johnny on the spot. Like when that fucker comes in, it is literally ring. My favorite response is when someone goes, hello, this is Jim. Uh, yeah, I just saw you put your uh, uh, information in on our website on our form at titaniumcrucible.com. You're calling me like uh, already yes. this what? Yes. Uh, Cause no one is that responsive. And listen, we teach our acquisitions guys this as well. Anytime a lead comes in like that, like Elijah says, call immediately within that first minute. And, and the feedback that I got from the guys was, is, well, it's, it's kind of awkward mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm having to run comps and I'm trying to figure out what my offer would be. And I tell them the awkward silence is okay because the, the, okay. the seller feels that. Oh yeah, baby. And guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna divulge more information to you and make it an even better lead. Or even start talking their price down. Yes. Silence is a weapon. People do not understand on the phone, just sitting there sometimes and letting them ponder. And on top of that, assuming you weren't the first person that filled that they website that they went to and they filled out this web form, okay? You're on the phone with them 20, 30 minutes. Those other people that didn't respond immediately are now calling and they're ignoring their call because you're on the phone That's right. with them, right? It's you're capturing the right to action. Right. Absolutely. You have them, keep them on the hook right there yep. and make the offer and, and don't get off the phone. I'll use an example of this. First ever podcast I ever did as a guest was on the Joe Fairless, the best, best podcast ever or something like that, mm -hmm. right? I think he's done more podcast episodes than any person ever. I mean, it's like, he literally releases a new episode every day. Wow. So, hammer. Yeah, you can't even find my episode anymore, so don't go, don't go to Shadow Comics. <laughs> right? um, but I went on there, and I've shared this before, but at the end, he caught me by surprise, and he says, what's the best way for people to contact you? Now, when he says this, I'm literally thinking to myself, the best way to contact me is by my cell phone. Call me. So oh, I said, my cell phone number is 817-915-6860. Call me. That's a, not a real cell phone number. That's a, no, uh -oh. that's a real one. <laughs> so I said that. And the next day, when, after a release, I got a call from a wholesaler in Dayton, Ohio, and a wholesaler in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. And they said, look, you said you're a nationwide buyer. So they both had a wholesale property that they were willing to sell for $15,000 a piece, and they were tenant occupied. And at the time, we were mainly just DFW, San Antonio, Houston, right. Austin, $15,000, tenant occupied? I was like, oh my God, we bought them, okay? So we bought these tenant occupied properties. Hey, come, come to find out the Jackson, Mississippi deal, she was not paying rent. So she moved out immediately and we never collected rent from her. And then it was an absolute shit show of a house, right? And so- oh, Not so juicy. So we, we struggled with this one for a while. And I found myself, I became the motivated seller. I just wanted someone in Jackson, Mississippi just to give me somewhere close to my 15 right, dollars me back. from this problem. So I what did I do? I went to Google and I said, sell my house fast, Jackson, Mississippi. And I went down, not to the first three. I went through the first three pages. Oh, baby. Saw all the Jackson, Mississippi carrot websites. All of them. Oh, yeah. Filled out the web forms. Called them. First of all, not one answered the phone. Not one. And here's what's crazy about this. They paid on some level to for have the that, SEO to for, have that. For you to do exactly what you did. Right. And then to not respond to it. Not that How absolutely it. asinine is that? Not even not respond. But that is the majority of cases. Or not answer, not even respond. Yeah, don't like, even answer. Not even a call back. Right. Nothing, just silence. And then I never got a call back, never got an email from any of them. And so I ended up becoming even more desperate. So what did I do? I put it on Craigslist as seller finance. Mm -hmm. And now we're carrying a note on it at 10% interest over the next 20 years. And we're making monthly cash flow on it. That was us turning a, a bad situation into a good situation. But unfortunately for all of those people in Jackson, Mississippi that paid to have that number one ranking, number two ranking, just first page ranking, never answered the phone. They could have done that and probably even more. Can you imagine what their outbound is like if no. they're doing it? Guaranteed, same situation. It's just a literal 
uh, your, your shoot buckshot. I mean, it's spray and pray. Right. Just shoot and hope you hit something. And, oh, it might be the one phone call. Could you imagine if, statistically speaking, every phone call got answered, every email got responded to within one minute? What would the numbers be like on a closing ratio? Well, this is a consensus between all of our Crucible students that have come through. Because what do we teach in the Crucible? Outbound. We're, we're teaching outbound marketing. Guerrilla marketing right. is what it's called. I mean, we are, we are hardcore on this. We are showing this is how you are going to saturate, not a, a market. You're going to saturate the United States. Okay, that's, that's what we teach in the Crucible. And it's a, it's a change of mindset for these people that come through. Right? I mean, it, it takes some time to develop. Well, everyone's over here, but they don't understand what they're doing. They're not even answering the freaking phone. Right. But they're spending the money. They're doing the Craigslist, Facebook ads. But it gets even stuff. worse than that. Oh, it, yeah. It's not even so much about answering the phone. What we do is, is at times we will go through and we'll do a batch leads audit mm -hmm. on our students. And so we literally hop on a call with them. We share the screen and we log into their batch leads account and we go through and we see how they're performing. I mean, this is pretty hardcore. I mean, we're going in and, and raw numbers. They don't like, and we're, we're going in and we're seeing, how are you responding? Are you naming your campaigns the way that we told you to? Are you tagging it? Are you mm -hmm. pulling your list correctly? All of that almost unanimously with all of the students that are struggling with the change in the marketing. What we found is, is they left meat just sitting there oh, yeah. to rot. Literally sellers saying, Yes, I would like to sell my house. I'd like to sell it for $60,000. Nothing. Silence. It just got left. But, but how? I don't even understand. It, it, it just, gets, it, it it's just like, gets pushed down in, in, the, in, the, in the inbox and it just chaos, right? I mean, that's what, what do we do as entrepreneurs? We create chaos. Well, then you create the system and process to handle the chaos. And, but that's the problem. That's where they're lacking. This is, they don't this know is such a change in, in what they're doing. And we're, we're creating so much chaos. And, and what does everybody know, uh, me, right, specifically? 50 days, 50 states and 50 days, right? So they feel like it's all about pulling more data, more text. When you go back and you watch the 50-day challenge, yeah, it was a ton of outbound marketing. But by day five, it was follow-up. That's all it was. And your inbound marketing is all predicated on the success is predicated on your follow-up game absolutely well your answer and follow-up yeah I mean, you got to first do what we've been talking but just about take ppc pointless, but. if you're running ppc what does the majority of ppc do fill out this web form and then it goes into a crm or an email right yeah and so at that point in time now you have to reach out to to get in contact with them look the reality of it is majority of the time they're not going to answer the phone if you wait but if you are fanatic about your follow-up, that's what makes inbound marketing so great. Because outbound marketing, the problem is, I can send you a text and you can ignore it very easily, right? You could also be motivated, go to my website. You're fill always going to be motivated. Right. You we have no idea if there is even a motivation over here. On this end, we're always going to have a motivation. That is if they call us, right. they're going to tell us, this is what I'm calling. Sometimes the motivation is not pure to what we want. They've to already make. answered the first question we ask. Right. Are, are you trying to sell your house? Are you interested to sell? Yes. Right. They've already answered that. So they we decided know. that. Right. Even more so. They decided. It's not only, no, I don't, I'll never sell my house. It's the exact opposite of that. It's like, I, I need to sell my house. Who, right. Where do I go to do that? I don't, and it's, I don't want a realtor. They've pre-qualified themselves pretty heavily by the time they get you on the phone. Agreed. And all you gotta do is answer the damn thing. And right. then make a fucking offer and you'll have a contract. I can but I can almost guarantee you that. What the one issue that I see in inbound marketing across all the companies that I've sat there and had the, the ability to audit, ours included, oh, where do is, you see two books? is follow up. I mean the 100%. lack of hey, you go into the notes and you see it, you'll see hot lead. I mean, they'll straight up tell you. I inherited this home, I don't want it, I'm behind on taxes, and then we called them twice and then we stopped. Right. That's weak. Oh, bro, no. This is a pet peeve of mine. We're gonna tangent on this. People thinking that they've communicated to someone because they call them once a day, once right. a week. So, did you call that person? Oh yeah, I did. I called them once yesterday. It's like, 
if it was RJ or Elijah and this is a commission that I want right now, like I don't care about any of the other deals. I'm gonna move on to those next after I get a hold of that one person and they're gonna fucking answer my phone. This is what I'm gonna call, I'm gonna text, I'm gonna email until I get them on the horn. But this is what differentiates A players from C players. Absolutely. Right here. I mean, this week alone, I watched Cassie and the TC process. She got told, hey, seller will not answer the phone. He's unresponsive. Bullshit. We can't call gain, bullshit right Can't gain that. access. You know what she did? She called. She left a voicemail. She sent him a text. And then she sent him an email. Guess what he did? He called right back immediately and said, I got your email. Right. What can I do? She was the only one that sent an email. Because some people are weird and they don't respond to certain right. types of communication. You have to hit all the marks. And sometimes... In our mind, psychologically, when someone doesn't answer the phone, especially when it's pertaining to, I'm fixing to sign a contract that equates to money in my pocket, there's an anxiety or nervousness. And we like to do self-talk. And we yep. fabricate scenarios of why they didn't answer the phone afterwards when we get off. It's literally, don't tell me you don't do it, because I know you do oh, it. Everyone does. does it. Like, I bet you they didn't answer because they already found someone else to sell their house. Yep. Or whatever the case may be. And really what's happening is the dude left his phone on the charger and he's in the john taking a dump. He's screwing his wife, he's eating lunch, and he just goes, I don't give a shit who's calling. I've got food in my mouth, I don't want to talk right now. And you just got to be cognizant of that. Bro, literally, Have a persistent level of follow-up. Literally day, the other day, I saw, you, I saw you setting up for the crucible. You were hardcore working on what you were working on. Right. Right? It does not matter what you, you were calling me for. You at that set your phone down on your desk yep. because of what you were doing. And I saw your phone ring three, four times. Easily. More than that. That doesn't mean you were purposely ignoring those people. No, you were it doesn't mean I didn't want what they had to give, but you know what? The one who calls me back tomorrow and I and the following day, and I finally go, yes, I've seen right. you calling. What's up? And then they, I, oh, well, I'm sorry to bother you, man, but I had that list I wanted to sell you of, of real estate investors. Do you still want to buy it? Fuck yes, I do want to buy it. I'm the one that called you to sell it to me, and thank you for calling me, even though it's irritating me. Exactly. But it's persistent level of follow-up but it's an appropriate level of follow-up because you can't go ham on someone and then they're going to literally block your number and not answer purposely out of spite because right. people are stupid and they don't know you're going to give them an offer for their house they what don't you, know they're screwing themselves what what okay. is the what do we capture when we do inbound marketing we capture their cell phone number absolutely their name the address and then their email yeah and i feel like people neglect the fact that we have ac access to not only place the phone call, but to send a text message and an email. And and what are we doing in both of those instances, really, to break it down to someone? We, we get lost in what we're trying to accomplish, but today, this right here is the most powerful form of marketing that existed in the, yep. in the history of mankind. I can, this is a hand billboard. When I sent that email, my phone just went and I looked at it and I went, RJ Bates from Titanium Investments trying to get a hold of me. Whether I like while, it or not, or the text message. While he got a phone call, a right. voicemail, Absolutely. a text message, all, and an email. All on the thing, the portal to this man's brain that you have. Literally, now, tele listen. telepathic portal to go right here right. to his head. Now, right now, I if, want you. If he decides not, or she, decides to not sell their house because we were over the top, I would rather miss all of those. 100% than not taking enough action. 100%. Okay. Now, that being said, this is <coughs> obviously an argument about outbound versus inbound. It sounds like we're starting to agree a little bit. I think, I think we would all agree that both of them are vitally important to your business. I don't think that any business out there should do one and not do the other. Agreed. And in reality, you can't. Because even outbound marketing creates inbound marketing. And let me ask you a question. If you go do outbound, but you don't have your inbound set up, is it beneficial to you? Unless you have a very, like what we do where, but even for us, it's complicated. All the phone number banks of numbers calling and texting and shit, like I mean, well, we got numbers from ev everyone here's phone rings with campaigns coming. I agree, in. but you also see that even during the 50 day challenge when it was purely outbound, some of the quote unquote things that we have set up for inbound marketing is what converted the lead. Agreed. Them going to our website and seeing, and then calling in and that, saying. Exactly what my point was. You sent me a text, but then I went to your website. I went to verify who you are. And I saw, so now I'm calling you on this other phone number. Right. 
So in reality, they work hand in hand. And you can do the free one of these. Like I talk, Google My Business page. Yep. You can set Facebook. up your website, a Facebook group, a Facebook page, all those things, get it going so there's a place someone can land on and be intelligent with your search, you know, search keywords and all that good stuff. But if you're gonna do this, you, you need to do that. But if you're gonna do that, you need to do this. So I would say, in all honesty, it's kind of a tie, but I, I, would, I would have to give you a little bit, I mean, we'll let these people tell us what's better, but I would have to say um, Outbound is gonna be more result oriented immediately. And, but it's going to fall flat say, without this. And I would say inbound marketing is going to, in the end, create higher profit margins. In the end. More it, closes and more profit margins. It, it's going to take me. time. But a lot of time. That being said, this whole video came about because I literally witnessed something in our office. And for those of you that don't know, our office is on Eagle Mountain Lake. Oh, yes. and, and we literally have a balcony right outside this wall right here that overlooks the, the, the lake. And I like to go out there and, and just take it all in. It's beautiful. We have beautiful sunrises and sunsets here. It's just a great atmosphere for us. Well, we also have quite a bit of wildlife around here. Oh, yeah. And so sometimes we see some crazy things. We've seen alligators. We've seen snakes. Six-foot snakes. Yeah. Uh, fish we, jumping we, out of the yeah, water. Fish, ducks, geese. Uh, yeah, everything you can think of. The other day I'm out there and um, I literally witness like a National Geographic video right in front of me happen. I see this wasp, he's hovering. There's a spider built full on spider web. The wasp decides he found his lunch. He's hunting. He's going to go eat the spider. Okay. So he flies to attack the spider. Gets caught right in the web, right? Starts freaking out. Spider decides he's gonna walk right oh, over. Mr. Spider thinks he's got lunch. Oh yes, Spider is happy. His plan worked. He walks right over, decides he's gonna eat the wasp. They start fighting. Full on battle, I'm watching this. It's crazy. Wasp, I watch him. He ain't going down without a fight. Yeah, he curls around, starts stinging the crap out of the spider. Oh my God, the spider is happening. Yeah, the spider is going crazy, biting him. Then they both die dead. Just right there, dead in the spider web. Just, but the point in this and the, the point in the analogy is the spider was inbound marketing. He took his time, was patient, built the web, and said, I'm gonna wait on my lunch to come to me. And the wasp was the outbound marketing. He says, I'm gonna take this in my own hands, I'm gonna go find my lunch, I'm gonna go hunt for it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, neither, good one analogy. Was, neither one was right and neither one was wrong. And I think that's the whole point of today's video, right? To be successful as a business, you need both outbound and inbound marketing. It don't work without each other. Your business. Right. So, so would you say we're a draw? Sure. I'll give you a draw. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the fans decide. <laughs> now, that being said, uh, we do have a couple of uh, cool announcements. Tomorrow, Absolutely. for the first time ever, Cassie's going to be going live, the comp queen. She's going to be doing this live 3 p.m. Central Time every Wednesday moving forward. She's going to be comping properties live for our Crucible students, for our team, and for anybody that joins the live. Throw on an address on there and she'll comp it for you. And she is good. And she's sassy. And she's fun. And she's got the knowledge. I mean, she literally does this virtually nationwide across the country. I would say at this point, she's comp multiple cities in every state in the United States. Yes. She, she has a vast knowledge of property values in different locations. So um, I'm very excited for the comp queen. Yes. Uh, also coming up, very exciting. Uh, if you found value in this um, episode or any of the other close to 300 episodes we have on the YouTube channel uh, for free, we would encourage you to come to the Titanium Crucible. It is our two day wholesaling boot camp. We're gonna teach you how to virtually wholesale nationwide like we do in all 50 states. If you watch the 50-50-50 challenge with RJ, you know um, the man is the greatest of all time. He, <laughs> he is the GOAT. So you'll be learning the secret sauce directly from the comp queen, the Viking wizard, uh, RJ Bates, my best friend. Uh, and then right after the Crucible, we have our annual golf tournament coming up, which is in support of uh, Beat Kids Cancer charity, where all proceeds go to families who are in need, who have children with uh, any type of cancer situation going on, we help support their families. A very worthy yes. cause. I'm very proud of uh, 
uh, RJ for putting that together and uh, the, the family that supports him. Uh, it's a beautiful cause. So come out and support us. Anything else you can think of? Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Stay tuned for more content that's coming soon. And thank you so much. I'm RJ Vase III. I'm Elijah De La Garza. Thanks more for joining us. Thank you, guys. Aloha.